All right, today we're going to look at how do we sum up the forces in the radial direction and find that centripetal acceleration. So whenever we do a problem where I have something going around in a circle and I want to deal with the forces involved. So maybe I want to talk about the force of gravity on the moon or maybe the tension in a string as I whirl a stopper around or I want to talk about friction for a car going around a corner or a car going over the top of a hill. Okay? All these are examples of when I'm going to have to sum up the forces parallel to the radius and set it equal to MAC and solve it. So I'm going to just kind of show some of the free body diagrams and then we're actually going to solve one of these. So the first thing you do when you have one of these problems is you draw AC. And AC always points radially inward. So for the moon, from the moon to the earth, because that's where my axis of rotation is, radially inward is the direction for AC. For that stopper going around, this is the direction of AC, radially inward toward that axis of rotation. For the car going around the corner, this is the direction of AC. For that car going over the top of a hill, this is the direction of AC. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put that direction for AC on there because that is going to be my positive direction. So that's the first step. The next step is you're going to draw those forces. So for the moon, I have a force of gravity from the moon. Now remember, when we talk about objects like this that aren't near the surface of the Earth, that force of gravity is the universal gravitational constant, big M, that would be the mass of the object in the middle, divided by the mass of the orbiting object divided by the distance between them squared. So you got to use um, Newton's law of gravitation for problems like that. For this one, I'm going to have more than just one force acting on it. I'm going to have both gravity, mg, and tension. Okay. And so when I end up with multiple forces, remember I've defined a positive direction. So when I sum up the forces in the radial direction here, I'm going to get tension minus mg. Now, what happens if there is a force that's not in the radial direction? Okay, let's see what happens. So now I got a car going around a corner. So I got gravity acting straight down. There's a normal force acting up. And what force is causing that car to go around the corner? What force is pointing radially inward? Um, they're not having a string attached to a post at the center, something like that. What holds that car around the corner? Well, friction. Friction is what allows that car to take the corner. So now, when I sum up the forces in the radial direction, I only have the force of friction. You don't sum up the forces mg and normal force because they're not pointing in the radial direction. They're pointing in my y direction. So I would include those in maybe the sum of the forces in the y direction, which is equal to zero. And so I have normal force minus mg equals zero. Okay. So it's all about that radial direction. All right, now for one we're going to try and solve. So I want to build a road, but I don't want people to use the hills on my road to jump their cars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design the radius of curvature of those hills such that as long as they're going less than 100 miles an hour, they're going to stay on the road. Okay? So I want to know what is this radius of curvature needed so that the speed where they're just starting to lose contact with the road is about 45 meters per second, which is approximately 100 miles an hour. So as long as they're going less than 100, which they should be, um, they'll stay on the road. They won't catch air. So, let's set up our problem. So, what forces are acting on here? So, I have mg and I have a normal force because it's on that surface. I've defined down as my positive direction. So, I sum up the forces in the radial direction, set it equal to mac. I have mg pointing in my positive direction minus the normal force equals mac. Now, I want my radius of curvature to be reasonable. I don't want it to be just a flat road. There's going to be hills on it. So 
how small do I need to make that radius of curvature so that if I go any smaller, they're going to jump. So if you've ever been on a roller coaster or you've driven over a hill in a car very fast, you'll feel almost weightless. Okay? And remember, this normal force, um, whether you're on a roller coaster or in a car, this is what our apparent weight is. So what I want to look for is what's the speed when my apparent weight goes to zero. So when my normal force goes to zero, such that this 45 meters per second is the maximum speed over that hill before catching air. So what I end up seeing then is I see that I get mg equals mac. And I'm going to make a substitution for ac that it's the speed squared divided by the radius of curvature. And my M's cancel, so it doesn't matter which car goes over my hill. That's good. And so we then solve for R. So R is going to equal V squared over G. And I can plug in my numbers of 45 squared divided by 9.8. And I find out the radius of curvature. I'm going to need to make it about 207 meters for a radius of curvature so that people going under 100 miles an hour aren't going to you know, catch air and be in a safety situation on that hill.